In this video, we will look at two intervention strategies to prevent striped cucumber beetle damage on organic farms. The striped cucumber beetle is a specialist herbivore that feeds primarily on cucurbit crops. These include winter squash, summer squash, melons, and cucumbers. The damage they cause is variable, but occurs most often and to the greatest extent on these crops. There are two types of cucumber beetle, both of which are agricultural pests, spotted cucumber beetles and striped cucumber beetles. Spotted cucumber beetles, which are found across the United States, are a more general herbivore and tend to be not as problematic on cucurbit crops as striped cucumber beetles. Striped cucumber beetles are found east of the Rocky Mountain Range and western striped cucumber beetles are found west of the Rockies. Knowing which beetles you find on your farm will help you to manage your cucurbit crops. This video will focus specifically on managing striped cucumber beetles. The striped cucumber beetle tends to attack farms on a particular schedule in the Northeast, and successful management depends on knowing the life cycle of the insect. Early in the summer, the adult beetles emerge from the field edges where they have overwintered and begin feeding on the plants they find. The beetles can quickly defoliate young seedlings, which are particularly susceptible to feeding damage. In addition to this physical injury, striped cucumber beetles can also transmit squash mosaic virus and the bacteria that cause bacterial wilt. These adults will lay eggs at the base of plants before dying. The second wave of pests begins when the eggs hatch. The larvae feed on the roots and stems, which can cause plants to wilt. Once adults, they will feed on plants until becoming dormant for the winter. Reducing this subsequent generation is an important strategy. There are several typical means of control that are allowed on organic farms. The first is OMRI-approved chemical-based applications like Surround, a kaolin clay-based control, or diatomaceous earth. These applications do not kill the beetles, but deter feeding. Another strategy is to choose varieties with genetics that are much less preferred by, and therefore less vulnerable to, the beetles. In addition, or paired with uh, techniques like applying chemicals like Surround to protect plants from striped cucumber beetles, my program is also developing plants that are just naturally less preferred by striped cucumber beetles, so they'll still taste great, have a great yield, but not be damaged by beetles. Finally, there are physical methods of excluding the striped cucumber beetles from your crop through the use of row cover and trap cropping. These are the focus of the rest of this video. Row cover is a physical barrier applied to the crop in the field. The cover is placed over rows to keep beetles from reaching the plants when the beetles emerge. At our farm, we use uh, row cover as well as plastic perforated cover to both exclude cucumber beetles, but also to warm up the crop, especially if the crops are transplanted early in the season when the weather is still pretty unstable. We put row cover over the seedlings as soon as they're planted. There are a number of different materials that can be used, including ProtectNet, clear plastic, and Agribon fabric. Supportive metal hoops are often used to hold the row cover up off of plants, and there are various ways to weigh it down at the edges, from sandbags to spikes to shovelfuls of dirt. The row cover comes off of squash as soon as the squash needs to get pollinated by by the insects. So as soon as they start flowering, we're removing the row cover. This would be important for any crop that requires insect pollination to set fruit. The use of row cover by organic growers can have some additional benefits to crops. It will give them some additional heat units, protection from the wind, and so you'll have a crop that's more vigorous and early and protected from insects. Uh, downsides, though, is, is petrochemical based. It's uh, a plastic, and so uh, you're still using those resources, and uh, there are issues with really scaling it up. One of the challenges is in, uh, growing plants under row cover is when you remove the row cover, although they are vigorous and lush, they're also very delicate. They haven't been challenged by the wind and really stiffened uh, the way they would if they're growing without it. So 
uh, it can also be important to time the removal of row cover, uh, both to making sure to remove it before flowers uh, start to emerge on the plant, but also a time when the weather will be mild and so the plants won't be jostled around or even ripped out of the ground. So we are starting to look at the economics and the impact on a farm of using row cover and looking at the dynamics of how row cover will help protect plants from insect herbivory and damage to the fruit, damage to the plant. Plant, uh, but also some of the labor costs, the input costs. Row cover can be uh, reused for a couple years, but not indefinitely. And so in looking at a whole farm plan, the economics of the final outcome has to be considered. And there's also an interaction with variety, where there are some cultivars of summer squash that are much less affected by beetles, and some cultivars that are much more uh, heavily, easily damaged by beetles. So there's many trade-offs to consider when designing how to use a physical barrier like row cover on your farm. Another strategy to manage striped cucumber beetle damage on your farm is through trap cropping. Trap cropping refers to the use of varieties that are preferred by a particular pest over the variety you are trying to bring to market. By growing squash with striped cucumber beetle preferred genetics, you can pull the beetles away from your main production crop. At our farm we also use trap crops and the concept is uh, fairly simple. We try to put out squashes uh, of varieties that the striped cucumber beetle prefers and we put it uh, either in rows or now we have gone to doing it on the outside perimeter of a block of squash. And the whole idea there is to uh, plant those squashes a bit earlier than the other squash so they get to a certain size. Uh, we cover them up a little bit too and then we uncover them and the squash cucumber beetles in theory should all wind up or a large part of them should wind up on that trap crop. And it does work, not 100% but it definitely works. Cucurbita maxima or Hubbard type varieties are highly preferred by striped cucumber beetles and can therefore be a good trap crop alongside less preferred cucurbita pipo crops. Note that this won't be effective for a cucurbita pipo crop that is also highly preferred, like golden zucchini. The beetles will be attracted to the trap crop plants, especially the flowers, and will preferentially spend time on them. One major consideration with this strategy is whether and how to kill the beetles on the trap crop in order to reduce the population present in the field. This can be done through targeted application of pesticides on conventional farms, which allows the trap crop to reach maturity, providing an additional product to be brought to market. The beetles and plants can also be destroyed with a flame weeder. Though effective, this may eliminate the possibility of harvesting a crop from the trap plants. As with any integrated pest management strategy, timing is key with both of the interventions we've discussed. If the adult population is reduced by being deprived of a food source with row cover or through destruction early in the season, fewer eggs will be laid in the field. The subsequent generation will therefore be smaller and the damage likely much less. If females are allowed to lay eggs before being killed, the intervention is much less effective. Note that females can begin laying eggs eight days after reaching their adult stage, and will lay eggs throughout their adult life. Of course, there are costs and benefits to consider with these interventions. We've developed economic analysis tools that analyze the costs and benefits of using row cover depending on your market and the varieties you're growing. These will be available here on the Eastern Sustainable Organic Cucurbit Project website. Hopefully, this can all be combined together to help you make holistic planning decisions for your farm. Many thanks to the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture for supporting this work.